Hello my friends, today we're gonna speak about the battle tanks that the Ukrainian army will get from the Western Allies, Challenger 2 and Leopard 2. And as usual, in this video I'll provide you with the current situation on the front lines of Russian-Ukrainian war. And here in the picture you can see the Challenger 2 British-made tank, the production started in 1993, it's quite modern one. And this is not the standard modification by the way, in the picture you can see that it has the extra armor on the front part, it's very robust and solid. And and also it has uh, some sort of the panels on the sides. The extra armor is very convenient, especially for the urban environment, but because of that, the tank becomes very heavy. The usual naked weight of the tank is around 64 tons, but if you put that extra armor, it becomes 75 tons, which is really heavy for this tank, and that reduces the maneuverability of this machine. But if you use them in desert environment, you have to have the additional armor because they may be spotted miles away. Way. And here in the picture you can see this armor, it's very tough and I think there is explosion inside. So it counteracts to the shell that hits that armor. Also have this some sort of the skirt, they say, and this may be used against the cumulative shell. So basically it explodes near to the skirt and the hot gases are not going inside the tank, but rather near to the wall of the tank armor. As usual, the front part of the tank has heavy armor, but the aft part usually has much less defense. And here you can see the naked variant of the tank, so no any kind of extra plate on the forward part of the base, no extra armor on the sides of the tank, and still you have very heavy armor turret. Also those places on the sides are very thick and inside over there there is the place for the driver. Challenger 2 tank is kind of unique because it has the rifled barrel and that makes the shooting from this tank very precise. So the shell that goes from this barrel rotates with a high speed but that is not good actually for the cumulative shells. For standard kinetic shells it's great. And this is the naked turret. The picture is not good but it's the best I could find in the internet. So all of the armor plates were removed and the turret now is on maintenance or something. You can see its structure. Very heavy armored on the front side. And here's the Challenger 1. You can see here the turret construction. It's almost the same with Challenger 2. And all of the plates removed. You can see how it looks without them. The engine takes all of the rear part of the tank. You can see it's very big but also very powerful. You may see the turbine. It's turbo diesel. And on the back side you can see extra fuel tanks to increase the range of the tank. The range is more than 500 kilometers, which is great. The tank is really heavy but because of the powerful engine and wide caterpillars it can do really hard off-road as you can see here it's very dirty out there but still it goes by the way about the main gun it's a nato standard 120 millimeter the same as in leopard 2 and here i can see there's the door probably for the aiming equipment and also have thermal cameras of the last generation installed on that tank and also machine gun on the top and here's the closer look on the optional extra armor on the front part of the base you can see it's very robust and I think that you can even push something really heavy with this. Again, you can keep it hollow like that. Still, you have extra armor plate over here. And it's great against the cumulative shells, as I say to you. But also on this first picture, you may see that it's filled with something over here. So there are many options for the armor protection. Let's speak about the ammunition that this tank may use. So you have the L30 gun, it's the name of it. And there could be many different shells so how you load the l30 cannon basically you take the shell first uh, this one or this one and then you put this cylinder as showed on the picture and then you close the reloading mechanism and then you fire and repeat once again this cylinder just burns out in the gun and nothing left out of it so again you have the shell that can penetrate the heavy armored vehicles and tanks and also you have the high explosive shell as well which can be used against the manpower and also tanks so this is the explosive shell on the right you can see uh, this is actually the explosives and this is the detonator so then it hit the armor it smashes around 
the armor and then detonator touches uh, the surface of the tank all of that explosive just explodes and the particles from inside of the tank inside the compartment where the crew is located the metal debris they just crack out because of the shock wave and penetrate everything inside but for the modern types of the russian tanks like t72 b3 and t90m this simply doesn't work because those tanks are made out of the special layered metal and those explosive shells will not cause the particles to separate and here in the picture you can see one of the variants of the shell this is the more powerful one it's 120 millimeter very long l29 that can be used for the l30 cannon or the gun how it's better to say i'm still not good in english but it can penetrate severe armor and also on the left corner over here obviously you will not see the upper part we have the german analog it's dm 43 which is the same powerful as this one so it's l28 but usually the l23 is used and sometimes l26 l23 can penetrate up to 450 millimeters of the armor at the range of 1000 meters and l26 can penetrate of 570 millimeters so i guess that this l28 it is very long it may penetrate more than 600 millimeters of the armor for the range up to two kilometers so i guess l23 would be not very effective against the russian tanks l26 yes it could be effective and l28 will penetrate everything that russia made so it depends on the ammunition we have the effectiveness of the tank will be very different and let's speak about the vulnerability of the challenger 2 so here in the upper corner you can see the t90m that may fire the new motor shells bm60 and they may penetrate this tank unfortunately especially if you don't have extra armor on the lower part and also those shells may penetrate the turret unfortunately i think i will not review the t90 tank in this video it should be the separate one so let's concentrate on challenger 2 and leopard 2. the vulnerable place of the tank i think this place for the driver and this wall in particular i think it's not more than 50 millimeters of width and can be penetrated with a 30 millimeter gun but you can hardly aim it especially than the turret at the same line with the base plus without this extra armor plate the front part of the base may be penetrated by any kind of the russian tank with a proper shell and this is the tuned version of the tank they put everything on it uh, the new electronics new aiming equipment i think israeli system that may intercept the shells so it's superb but we're not gonna get them for sure so I think this version would be the best for Ukraine if we expect to use them in urban environment in the cities. But if not, uh, they will give us the standard version. So this is the standard version and still I would like to see extra plate on the forward part as I showed you before. About the side protection, if you're not going to use them for urban environment but just in a forest, I think it's uh, not really necessary. It will reduce the mobility of the tank. So the stock version with the frontal armor and some new electronics and thermal cameras is the best variant for Ukraine. Speaking about the losses, just one Challenger 2 was lost throughout the history and it was the friendly fire from other challenger 2 in iraq war and there was one case in iraq then this tank got seven hits of the rpg7 and still was able to return back on its own to the british base one more minus i think that this tank is just bigger compared to the russian tanks but still i think it got the better armor compared to russians especially if we speak about the turret and also if we don't speak about the t90m which also got the heavy armor turret but we're gonna speak later about the tank in other video you can see there are so many options of the cameras and thermal cameras and other stuff aiming so this tank is very versatile all right leopard 2 we're gonna get them firstly from the poland and this is the polish modification of that tank yes it's german made but poland did some tuning and now it looks like very futuristic but actually it is leopard 2a4 standard tank just some extra armor on a turret new cameras new thermal cameras and new aiming equipment electronics 
and this tank looks very modern but actually as i told you it's leopard 2a4 just with different armor plates on the turret you see before germany got lots of the leopard 2 tanks and they were on a long-term storage but still you have to spend lots of the fund to maintain them and they decided to sell them to someone and to poland as well so poland got those tanks uh, you see they're on a factory somewhere there and they did heavy duty maintenance on those tanks modernizing them you see how rusty those tanks were on the long-term storage and really poland did a great job restoring them and this is the turret without extra armor plates and if you look from inside you see how wide or how thick uh, this armor is i think it's more than 600 millimeters or something really really tough armor and here you can see extra armor that could be open like that and you have the access for the maintenance of the gun etc and now it looks very different compared to the standard leopard 2a4 version but really it is about the main gun it's very reliable rh120 and as you understand it has the same caliber as challenger 2 120 millimeter but it uses a little bit different shells the most effective are dm53 and dm63 both of them penetrates any kind of the russian tank about the engine i think this one is the most reliable from all of the tanks the name of it is mtu mb 873 ka 501 it has 1500 horsepower so you can see very powerful and it's been designed by mercedes and maybach suspension also the best in the world it's very important that you want to ride and shoot at the same time for example on russian t90 and t75 you cannot shoot precisely on a speeds of more than 30 kilometers an hour you basically will not hit the target here it is absolutely no problem this is the base of the tank and here you can see this hatch over here and basically you may put different types of the armor in there the armor may look like this and it makes this tank very versatile depends on what armor you get and what do you need from this tank but again you have the option just for this front part on this picture you can see the leopard 2a0 the first type of that tank you can see visually there is no difference and they basically put the heavy armor on new models and that's why they're getting heavier and heavier but with that powerful engine it's not the problem also if you look at the polish tanks they have this armor on the side and let me show you the other picture you can see on the picture the same armor on the front part and this is one of the first modifications of the Leopard 2A4. The next modification goes with this armor, which is more efficient compared to the first modification of A4 variant. So this is the first version of the A4 variant uh, with explosives probably inside, or those could be just armor plates. And as for the Polish tanks, you can see we'll have that variant, the first variant of A4. Just the turret was modernized and the base was left, I think, with no changes. Speaking about the standard armor, it can withstand up to 650 penetration from the cumulative shell. And unfortunately, this tank may be penetrated by the new Russian shells. The front part of the tank, well, I think it depends on the plate uh, that you have inside the hatch. Also, this uh, lower part, especially near to transmission, has a very thin metal. Here you can see it. Uh, it was cut basically by someone. It's not the corrosion, but it's very thin here. Speaking about the armor, I think Challenger 2 is clearly a winner here. And here is the modification of the Leopard 2A5 made by Germany. Basically, they've took the Leopard 2A4 and modernized it till the Leopard 2A5. Speaking about the losses of the Leopard 2 tanks, uh, Turkish lost eight of them in Syria, and mostly they've been destroyed by the TOW missiles. As it is reported, it was the mistake by the Turkish command that sent those tanks alone to the battle without any cover. There were around 3,600 Leopard 2 tanks produced, and about the Challenger 2, 
it's 447 so here clearly you have more options for the leopard 2 tanks more option for upgrade of this tank and also for delivery to ukrainian army so in general there is no clear winner between leopard 2 and challenger 2 especially if we take the standard modification of the british tank and the poland modification of leopard if you take this polish modification obviously you have more heavier armor that may protect the crew better compared to the standard leopard 2a4 german version suspension and the engine goes to leopard also the guns are quite similar but uh, the off-road capability goes to challenger 2 and for me personally maybe i just like uh, the design of the challenger 2 more this lowered gun here and two kind of the how to call it boobs <laughs> so it's looking kind of massive and muscular uh, compared to the standard version of the leopard a4 but the polish variant looks absolutely great it's modern version but finally for design i will give my like to challenger 2 it's been confirmed that ukraine will get 14 units of the challenger 2 tanks and around 12 also up to 14 units of the leopard 2 tanks from poland yes you may say that it's the low number but we need to build the new infrastructure for those tanks so it's just the beginning and in future we'll have many more of those tanks delivered to ukraine maybe even abrams tanks but i'm not sure all right front lines unfortunately enemy advanced today near to bahmut on the south there is klishivka over here in the small village and today russians tried to get it under control and there were some of the reports on their telegram channels that they actually captured their village but later on they confirmed that they are unable to take it under control but nevertheless they already crossed this supply road but we have the different one from the north over here so before after today they moved forward quite a bit Glishivka is kind of important since from this place they may attack try to attack Bakhmut from the south so this vector i don't really like it and if they took this road under control which i see they've done they may go to the bakhmut afterwards but firstly they need to capture Krushivka, not to let it behind the front lines and as for solidar on the north from bakhmut they were able to capture the seal the part of the village with a railway station over here which is not good also they advanced towards the Krasnogara today so the timeline is like that sorry from this part they advanced so they advanced over here and to the seal as well so they took this territory and ukrainians are still in blahodatne protecting the village but it's very hard i expected actually my friends that after the conflict spark between the russian defense ministry and the wagner group i thought that wagner group will not fight that hard in that case since their achievements were not recognized by their official russian army but two days ago prigozhin went to kremlin he spoke probably with putin and he met with shoigu and i guess they decided something and they've continued their attack on bahmut south of bahmut and north part but i hope finally russians will not be able to take the city i'm almost sure about it especially with the new military equipment delivered to ukraine but then it will be delivered i think in two or three months so we need to get tight and hold on waiting for the new weapons my friends now press the like to this video also if you want to support this channel there are some links in the video description below you may support me on patreon paypal or donatella whichever is more convenient for you thank you so much for your support and your help i wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time